Okay, so uh, welcome to another sharing session on the topic how I make a podcast website using serverless technology in 2023. We have our guest speaker, uh, Mr. Sheng Yu Fan, and uh, he is a developer advocate in JetBrains who focus on web technology and backend development. He is uh, fascinated with researching new technology and fond of skills that increase productivity. And he is in charge of promoting technology such as Kotlin, IntelliJ ideas, and providing solutions. He also loves open source technologies and communities. Now, uh, Mr. Fan, please. Okay, thank you. Okay, good morning. Um, I'm Shen You. I'm a um, developer advocate in JetBrains. So I'm really excited to be here because um, I attend, uh, actually I attend Hong Kong Open Source Conference in 2020 uh, 20 and 21. Uh, but in the last two times, I am attend in an uh, online conference. So I uh, never been to here uh, until this time. So I'm really excited. And also, I would like to thank you, Coscup, for supporting me to be here. And also, my company, JetBrains, uh, also sponsored this company. So if you got a chance to uh, com participate the the raffle game in the conference, you can get a chance to have the IntelliJ IDEA license this time. So um, please enjoy. So um, this time, uh, I, I remember that in 2020, I gave a talk about how to use Kotlin to write a web API using our framework called Cater uh, that was made by JetBrains. In 2021, I share uh, uh, my experience how we um, run a um, technical community in Taiwan online uh, during the pandemic. So in the last two topics, I feel that one is for technology topic and another one is for soft talk. So this time I want to find a balance between two. So I make a um, podcast website and want to share the uh, the experience I, <coughs> I I I walk through and also uh, some perspective from this journey. So um, before we get into the technical part, I want to um, give you some overview of my story. Uh, I joined JetBrains in 2019. Uh, that was the year um, I start uh, advocate uh, Kotlin technology and also uh, we. Uh, highly involved into the technical community. Uh, during that time, we uh, run the Kotlin everywhere uh, with Google because at that time is the the Android team uh, decided to um, use Kotlin as a programming language uh, for Android. So uh, at that time, we collaborate with Google to have this event to uh, introduce Kotlin and uh, introduce how to use Kotlin everywhere. Uh, not only on Android, actually you can use on and server side. And and then you you know the thing uh, the pandemic have happened, so um, there's no physical event during that time. So in order to uh, advocate uh, Kotlin, so I try to arrange the the online uh, study jam uh, online. So uh, we arrange the study jam every week. And we create the line group and telegram group to um, for discussion. And also we record all our activity on YouTube. So if you got chance, you can uh, search the calling Du Shu Hui. It's that our 30 gen uh, playlist, and you can see all the activity and recording on YouTube. And during the pandemic, we, we got uh, <coughs> we got a chance to have a, a very few physical event. So. Uh, that time, I collaborate with uh, GDG to have a um, <coughs> Kotlin server serverless API workshop uh, in GDG. So um, in that time, we use Kotlin to write a serverless API on Google Cloud Platform, and uh, we try to use uh, Cloud Functions. Uh, actually, that was the time I first um, learned about the technology about uh, ser serverless. So uh, that's the fundamental part of this talk. So uh, that's the first time I use serverless. And in the last two years, we want to give the stage to the, um, to the speaker in <coughs> Greater China region to spread their knowledge on Kotlin. So we arranged a Kotlin, Zhongwen Kai Fa Zadahui, Kotlin developer, a Kotlin conference for Chinese developer. So um, we record everything online, so you can watch this video on Bilibili or YouTube. 
and uh, in the same time, we also collaborate with the, the Accord user group. It was the uh, user group that's supported by JetBrains. So all around the world, we have 211 Kotlin user group around the world. And in Greater China region, now we got uh, 18 Kotlin user group in this region. So uh, we also have KUG in Hong Kong. So if you are interested in Kotlin, you can attend the, the activity that uh, hosted by uh, Hong Kong KUG. So this uh, last year, uh, we, uh, I talked to the, the organizer of Kotlin user group. And we are thinking about uh, what we can do uh, for Kotlin. And uh, uh, we came up with an idea that maybe we can have a podcast show to talk about Kotlin. Because we search online, and we realized that there's no um, Kotlin podcast in Chinese. So actually, we have Kotlin podcast in English. And that was hosted by my supervisor. So I think, OK, that may be good. I can have uh, another uh, Kotlin podcast, but speaking in, in, in Chinese. So we start up this uh, podcast show last year um, with uh, the, the calling user group organizer in Shanghai. Uh, so the organizer, Yuang, and uh, uh, one of my <coughs> our volunteer in Taiwan, Maggie. So we uh, three, per uh, three people co-host this, <coughs> this, this podcast show we call Calling Lu Bian Mantan. Calling Fireside Podcast. So the current result is um, is is I list here. So we have three co-hosts, and we produce nine episodes in one year. So you can search uh, our episodes in YouTube and also other platforms. So in order to cover two um, two locales. In, in my region for the Ch Greater China. So we provide two locales, one for traditional Chinese, and another one is simplified Chinese. So we need to deploy all the podcasts to 10 platforms. And we also uh, want to provide a video version of the podcast. So you can see that we also deploy to YouTube and Bilibili. Uh, I feel that is a in uh, evaluation process on this, this show because uh, in, in the very first beginning, we just make a logo and pick a sing music and then we get started. But actually, uh, when you start a program, then you start picking on some detail. For example, uh, everyone is starting to prepare a new microphone just for the better sound quality. And then we are picking about our background and our lighting. So you can see if you uh, watch the vid video version on YouTube, you can see that everyone is changing their background. And then we put more effort on uh, the post-editing and design. So you can see that our layout is quite different in the recent version. And also, we are working on some special episode. Uh, for example, uh, we, we named this podcast show called Fireside Chat, right? But uh, actually, we uh, have some special roadside episode, which means that uh, one of our co-hosts, he traveled to, to Singapore, and he have a roadside, roadside episode with our guest speaker. And uh, it's quite loud in, in, the, in the episode, but we feel that it's quite interesting. So after one year of the podcast show, so we are thinking about what's next we can do. And the things we want to involve is two parts. One is for website. We feel that um, we don't have the website because we, we deploy all the content to different platforms. But we don't have a centralized place to um, aggregate all the information. So we think to have a web website is quite important. And you can see that we deploy uh, so many platforms across the, the region. And it's really hard to. Uh, get the number of the the listener <coughs> of the listeners, so we want to get a statistic uh, of of our podcast show. So that's the two parts that we want to involve. So the T uh, TLDR side of the website is that we uh, finally make a website, and it, it was uh, created by a, a framework called I Astro. Then I will talk that later. So you can see that in the, in the website, we have the uh, home page. 
we have introduced our um, podcast show, we introduced our host, and also you can list all the episodes in the same page, and also you can see the podcast detail in the single, single, uh, single episode page. Okay, also, also you can list on our website. For the report, um, actually we create a um, statistic chart in our backend that will uh, list all the number from the different platforms for a single episode. So you can see that uh, in a single episode, uh, the, the list number is here. And also we can see the, the trend of different days. Okay. So how, how do we do that? So the overall structure is four parts. Uh, the first part is the website. Um, actually, we want to keep it simple, so we uh, just aggregate all the information and use the Astro to generate the static web page. So that is the static uh, file of HTML. But actually, um, the data is quite dy dynamic, so we need a um, data API in the back end so it can provide the content to the website. So as Astro is a framework that can uh, trigger the HTTP, uh, HTTP request to get the data from the back end, and then it will generate the static HTML for the front end. So that, uh, that will the overall workflow for the, the website. And in the back end, uh, we also need a crawler because uh, we need to grab the, the listener number from different platform. And uh, it's quite tricky to get a number because uh, all the platform have different page and different layout, different um, data structure, and they don't provide any API. So you, 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 the only thing you can do is to roll the crawler to grab all the things. And then we want to aggregate the, the number, so we create a report. Um, in the beginning, I just think maybe we can just write some SQL query from the database and get an get a idea of the statistic. But actually, uh, one of our co-hosts, uh, she is familiar with the routing, uh, uh, routing framework, so he, she can create the, the chart UI very easily. So uh, that's the reason why we created the, the chart UI. Okay, so um, how we select our technology we use um, in the website, we want to have a GenStack approach uh, because I think we are a content-focused uh, website, so we don't want to use uh, too, diffi too diff difficult uh, technology. We just want to have some static file and store it on our uh, storage on Google Cloud. So if you are not familiar with the GenStack uh, technology, you can go to the GenStack.org website. It will introduce... Um, the idea of GenStack. Also, if you want to build a static website, just like me, you can go to the site generators um, in the, in the site, <laughs> sidebar. Then you can search the technology you want to use, and they will list all the static uh, generator for you. And the reason why I choose Astro, you can see uh, Astro is listed here, it's just because um, I feel it's quite popular recently, and uh, I want to learn some new things. And also, uh, when I work with the, the web zone team, that is the IDE from JetBrains, and you can see that in 2023.1, our newer version uh, is starts supporting Astro. So that's quite kind of uh, dog fooding for our product. So I think maybe I can try Astro. Okay. <coughs> For data API, uh, because I, I mentioned that in 2021, I start, um, in <coughs> I start learning how to use serverless technology, and I choose uh, Google Cloud Platform uh, as, as a platform to write uh, <coughs> Cloud Functions. So um, actually, in Cloud Functions, you can use any technology to write some service. And as a Kotlin advocate, so we choose Kotlin to write uh, cloud functions. For the crawler, um, actually, uh, I think you can use any language to write crawler in this <coughs> in this modern uh, in this modern area. But um, as our podcast is Kotlin podcast, so we want to use all the technology in Kotlin. So we choose um, JSoup. It's kind of uh, 
HTML parser in Java ecosystem, and we can use Kotlin with Java. So that's no problem uh, for us to use uh, JSOUP to write crawler. And also, we want to deploy on service, serverless platform. So we use Cloud Platform to build a function. And also, we need to trigger it uh, hourly. So we use Cloud Scheduler to trigger the Cloud function. And in the last part, we need to need a report. So we use uh, Spring Boot. And also, we use Vardin Char to, in uh, to integrate with each other and to uh, draw the report chart for the numbers. OK, so let's got start the journey. The first one, we need to build a website using Astro. So um, Astro is built, built on top of uh, Node.js and JavaScript. So you can use NPN to create a new Astro project. And after you create an uh, Astro project, the project is quite simple. You can put every public asset in public folder. And the core thing is in SRC source folder. And there's a lot of different settings file in the, in the root folder. But actually, you can only focus on the SRC. The source folder is enough. And if you want to have a live preview, you just run the NPN live preview server. OK, um, so in the source folder, um, actually, you just uh, focus on three folders. One is component. Component is used for the, the reusable component in your page. So if you want to have a header, you can just put a header in components. The second one is layout. The layout is kind of uh, the, the overview, uh, the overall layout for your page. So if you want to have a, um, <coughs> a, a, a main layout in your, your page, you can use a main layout astro file in layouts then you can have the uh, simplified the, the layout system. And also, if you want to have different page, you can put the page file in the pages folder. So actually, you can get uh, several page in, in your, your Astro project. Then if you need some uh, global uh, script and style, then you can put in the script and style folders. So let's start with create the main layout. So um, this is your, your um, browser, and you want to have a diff, uh, the overview layout. But actually, we just put the HTML and head, head and body in your page. So that's the, the overview main layout. In Astro file, you can uh, create two parts. One part is just like the markdown um, from matter. That is the place you write TypeScript or JavaScript. And the second part is the, the component. You can write any HTML in, your, uh, in, in the Astro file. And the two important things in your main layout is uh, the one is slot. It's kind of the place that you can extend by your uh, child, child page. So you put a, a slot in your main layout, then your child layout can extend the main layout to put another um, component in this this place. Also, you, if you want to um, pass some parameter from the, the TypeScript, you can decide it some uh, variable using Astro properties. Then you can use that in your uh, component. OK, so how to use a layout in your page? First, you just create a, a page file in the page folder, and then also two parts. In the front matter, you can import the main layout. And then in your component, you just write a main layout as a HTML tag. Then you can put your content in the main layout, and it will uh, push into the, the slot part. So that's quite simple. And if you want to have some um, components specific style, you can also put in your um, Astro file. And the, the, um, the scope is only applied to this component. And so after we apply the, the main layout, you can see our browser have the, um, the, the header and the footer. So how do I get the header and the footer? If you want to have some reusable component, you can also um, <coughs> create a new file in your component folder. Then you can uh, write some header in your component. 
then in your um, main layout, you can put the top header in our um, in our main layout. Then you can have the header in the in the in the in the layout. So you can see that the main layout is like something like this one. So it will display in your main layout here. Okay, it's quite simple. So after you create all the page for um, for the uh, Astro, so then you need to deploy to to your um, Google Cloud Platform. So before you deploy, you have to make some uh, pre presetting. The first thing you need to do is to create a bucket using your domain name because you want to connect your domain name into the cloud storage. Then you need to verify your domain name ownership by uh, Google Search Console. And then you need to point your domain name to cloud storage on your DNS service. And also, you have to uh, make your bucket access accessible, accessible publicly um, by Google Cloud. And don't forget to set the default page and error page on uh, cloud storage. So the cloud storage will uh, notice that you will need to uh, point the, the default page and, and the 404. And then you need to deploy your, your um, website. So we use Cloud, cloud Build. Uh, in, in three different steps. So um, basically, you just use NPN and Cloud SDK to deploy your um, uh, website. So during the, the deployment, you can see that um, <coughs> Cloud Build will build everything for you, uh, follow your step, and deploy to the cloud storage. OK, but we need an API, right? We need a data API. So if you want to have a data API, you can use the cloud function. You just create a new um, Kotlin project in, in IntelliJ IDEA and add the functional uh, function framework from Google and add some plugin for Maven. And then you need to decide um, the, what the structure of the episode uh, using the data class. And then you need to write a handler the handler is uh, to handle the HTTP request. So you extend the HTTP function from the, uh, function, uh, from the function framework. And you need to implement the service function to get the, the request and the response. Uh, before, uh, because we want to use JSON for the, the result, so you need to do some uh, serialization uh, uh, using the serialization library. So, um, we use the Kotlin X serialization, which is developed by the Kotlin team. So you just need a few lines of code, then you can uh, serialize your episode data into JSON file. And then don't forget to uh, set up the response for the status code and the content type. And after you build your um, cloud function, you also need to deploy to your um, Google Cloud Platform. So we you also use Cloud Build. In this part, um, you, you can uh, specific the, the region, the function generation, and JVN runtime and memory size for your cloud function. So after um, you set up all the detail, <coughs> cloud, fun cloud function will help you do the DevOps things. So after you finish your API, then back to the Astro. Uh, in our page, we need to fetch our API using TypeScript. So actually, actually, you can use JavaScript as you want. So in this uh, example, you just use TypeScript to fetch the, the HTTP endpoint and get the JSON. Then you use the um, map function to um, get the data and <clears throat> put it into your component. Then you will display on the page. And you. You, you realize that uh, you, you not only list all the episodes, you also need a single episode page. But um, we cannot uh, generate all the page manually by ourselves. So in Astro, you can uh, have a dynamic page. Uh, you can see the file name is um, <coughs> wrapped by ID. So in, in this function, you can uh, give Astro a rule that how you can generate all the page by an API, and then it will get the ID to, uh, to fetch another API to generate a single page content. So in this in example, you can see that there's a two part. 
this part is get the old episode data, and this part is go uh, get the simple episode data to generate all the page. So actually, you only need two files to generate all the website. So after you uh, finish the, <coughs> the data API, you can deploy it to the uh, cloud functions. Uh, that was the screenshot for the cloud function. So after we finish the front end, then we need to work on the back end. So in the back end, as I mentioned, that we can use JSOUP to um, grab the data from the web page. So you can see that is the JSOUP example. Basically, uh, JSOUP is kind of the HTTP client and the HTML parser. So HTML, uh, they can send the HTTP request to the web server. Then you can use the CSS selector to select the uh, DOM in your HTML. And then you can extract the data from your HTML. So I use Shimalaya as an example. Um, as you can see that we want to grab the number from the page. So uh, this is the HTML part from the page. So actually, you just can uh, send the HTTP request, use the CSS selector, and get the number and <coughs> convert into the integer. And if you want to get the number from YouTube, it's, the thing is quite tricky. Because in the very first beginning, I grab the number, uh, I get the HTML from YouTube. And if you open up in the browser, it's a blank page. So I'm, I'm worried about that. Oh, maybe I can use uh, Selenium to run the JavaScript and get a number. But actually, if I take a second look of the HTML, actually, YouTube uh, put the number in the meta under the head. So you can also use the CSS selector to get a number from your HTML. So you don't need to use the Selenium to, to, get a, to grab the number. So it's quite easy. So after we uh, have several crawler, uh, you can wrap in, in the cloud function, deploy to Google Cloud Platform. But we need to get an hourly number. So you need to trigger that function hourly. So in Google Cloud Platform, you can uh, use the cloud scheduler. And there's a lot of different uh, action you can do. Uh, you can set the Chrome, uh, Chrome string to uh, trigger the cloud function hourly. And during the, the trigger, you can uh, trigger the HTTP event, or you can uh, push some Papa sub event to the, to the queue. And then you, you, you can grab the number. So the last part is get the um, um, display the statistics data using the voting chart. So if you want to create a voting uh, project, you, you have to um, start the Spring Boot um, project and with the uh, voting <coughs> component. Also, if you want to use the chart component, you have to add some add-on in your project. Then you just uh, implement the chart, <coughs> chart class and add to the canvas. And before you uh, display the chart, you have several configuration you can do. Uh, you can set up the title, subtitle. You can have some plot or some x and y. And also, you need to grab the data from your service and convert to the data series for the chart, and then put it into the config. And then you can display the chart just like this. So if you are familiar with some, um, for example, um, the the desktop development or Android development, you might be familiar with this kind of code because um, you don't need to touch any HTML or CSS or JavaScript. Just use your um, the Kotlin code to write the front end side. So um, the reason why we use this part is because um, all of our co-hosts are uh, mobile developer. So for for them, they feel that it's more comfortable for them to write the front end. <coughs> UI. Okay, so in the final part, we have some retrospective. So the technologies we use is uh, four parts. Uh, we use Astro for the front end web page, and we use function framework with Kotlin for the data API, and we use JSOUP with Kotlin for the crawler, and uh, the final part, we use Spring Boot and routing chart for the report. And we use different uh, GCP service. Uh, like uh, cloud storage and cloud function and cloud scheduler. And also, we uh, use cloud build for the CI and CD. 
So uh, we are talking about um, how we can move things for, move for war. Uh, the first thing we need uh, seeing is that we need to pay down the technical, uh, technical debt because um, during the development, we tried too many uh, new things. So we want to limit it, the technology we use. So we kind of trying to um, centralize all the things in single part. And also we noticed that uh, the cloud function is kind of built on top of cloud run. So we might uh, migrate our uh, code into cloud run. Also, we uh, didn't only support one locale on our website, so we are planning to uh, support two locales. Also, uh, from Google and Apple and Fire Story, it's, um, they didn't provide any web page that displayed the listen number. So the only thing we, need, we can do is to download the CS file for the statistic. So uh, that may be the, uh, the second part we need to go walk through. And since we have the data API for all the episodes, so uh, as I mentioned that other co-hosts are the mobile developers. So they are uh, thinking about maybe we can build a cross-platform mobile app using uh, Kotlin. So that was the next step. So um, that's all. So uh, if you are interested in Kotlin and you want to list some uh, interesting podcast, actually uh, our podcast is talk about not only the technology part, also um, some soft skill and the experience they are working aboard. So uh, if, if you are interested, in, scan the QR code and get the a website. You can listen to all the episodes. And also, uh, we have Coast Cup in Taipei. So if you got chance, any chance to Taiwan, uh, come to our booth and we can talk. OK, thank you. Uh, I think we run out of time. Uh, uh, we have, we have more. Oh, one, one, uh, okay, okay. Any question? Hi, uh, thanks for the sharing. That's very informative. Uh, quick question. So what's the greatest challenge that your team have encountered in setting up the website? Uh, sorry, can you? Uh, louder. Uh, what's the greatest challenge that your team have encountered when setting up the oh, website? Okay. Um, <laughs> actually, all of our co-hosts are backend developers, so mm -hmm. it's quite unfamiliar with us to write front-end code. So um, I think Astro is quite easy for us because um, I just follow their tutorial and copy paste from their, their code, and it just worked. So I think it's quite easy for us to have some uh, result. But actually for us, um, I think to aggregate all the technology into one place is quite challenging. And if you uh, use too many new technology for yourself, uh, sometimes you will f lose your focus during the development. Yeah. OK, thank you. OK, uh, thank you, Mr. Fan.